Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Each of these cocoons. How silk is made? Very cool. Silk Road. Let's do it. Preemptive like. Original link to the video. Top of the description. Below that, link to the Discord. Click on it. Send you right over there. Would love to have you. Let's go. Each of these cocoons holds almost a thousand feet of silk. Sorry, I just... So this was always a secret, and it was a very coveted product by uh, Europeans, and so it's it's going to be a cool experience kind of historically to, to learn how they were... how silk was made since it was such a secret process for so long. And these wiggly little guys are responsible for spinning them. Here in Nam Khao, Vietnam, craftspeople weave silk that's so valuable it can sell for $150 a dress. That's because this is really delicate work. Each cocoon has to be hand pulled, and the worms themselves are really hard to raise. For one, they're always hungry, and they need the perfect environment, or else they'll die. Today, Vietnam is the second biggest producer of raw silk in the world. China, Nearly assuming. everyone in this village works in the industry, and they're using many of the same techniques passed down for generations. But about a decade ago, the industry in this town almost dried up. Fake silk from China had flooded the market, and warmer temperatures were threatening the worms' lives. But this area revived itself, thanks to Han. She got farmers to weave more profitable goods and helped them reinvest in new technologies that boosted production. We head to Vietnam to see how one village saved its big business of silk. Silkvillages.vietnam And they produce silk in a tedious 30-step process. It all starts in fields like this one. There aren't any worms out here. This is just their food, and they need this much of it. These leaves contain vitamins, amino acids, and enough moisture that the worms never need to drink water. Farmers bring loads of harvested leaves to the silkworm houses. You can tell how ready they are to make silk or ready to eat by their smell. That's awesome. 35 year veteran farmer. He buys tens of thousands of worms. I from... love, love watching people do things that they've been working on for so long, decades here, because. You, if you ever notice when you try something new, your your muscle memory takes over. And when muscle memory and, and just memory memory is that reinforced, it's just magical to see someone brainlessly do something that would take uh, a lot more concentration with fewer experience. It's something that is obvious, yet still cool and satisfying. Breeders each year. Sorry. Han Van Tin is a 35-year veteran farmer. He buys tens of thousands of worms from breeders each year. And he raises them on big bamboo mats on the first floor of his home. When it's feeding time, he lays a net on the worms. Then he heaps three pounds of food on top. The healthy worms crawl through the holes and get to munching. Genius. Genius. So that's so awesome. So healthier worms, I'm assuming, will create more silk and better silk, probably. And so only the healthy ones can put the effort to go through. That's awesome. And they eat over 600 pounds of leaves a day. Meaning Tim can't rest because the worms eat every four hours. They also need a sterile environment and a perfect temperature of around 22 degrees Celsius. What is that in Fahrenheit? That's like... 
It's like 75 Fahrenheit or something. Là 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 sợ nhất là là nó bị bệnh gọi là bệnh sâu sắn nó gai người. Không có không có từ trong bụng. After nearly a month of eating and sleeping, two Fahrenheit, sorry, okay. their bodies will plump up. À, tơ nó nhìn có thể tơ vàng nhìn lên và đến vậy đây chúng ta cho lé lên và để ra thành kén. Tin delivers the worms to another family in Hong Kong. They hang them on racks stuffed with straw. The worms spit the silk out of this organ, called a spinneret. During this vulnerable time, workers fight off bees that attack the silkworms. I've had one of those. Those things are so fun to use. Bees that the shocking, and we used to hit each other with them. Oh, they zap. Okay, sorry. Okay. And she said earlier that like warming temperatures could hurt the industry. But doesn't that mean they just have to move move I know just move higher in elevation or just move a little bit north in altitude easy to say but isn't that what they could do if it does get too warm it's just move to a slightly colder area that is now slightly warmer and a good temperature attack the silkworms <laughs> The worms need sunny weather to produce colorful cocoons. Because if it's rainy and gray outside, the cocoons could lose their color and look damaged. Within two days, the cocoons are ready. Workers remove each one by hand. Once they've got a big enough pile, they boil the cocoons in water. That way, they can kill the pupae insides and either eat them or use them in traditional medicine. I gotta say, as far as insects go, I think this one looks a pretty tasty. Then they soak the cocoons for another five to seven hours before pulling the threads. Families here pass down the delicate technique of hand pulling thread. Pham Thi Buong has worked in silk for nearly 60 years. She'll unravel about 70 grams of thread a day. So in, in essence, her family has been doing this since the 1800s? Like the, at least the, the mid-1800s? Because she's 60, say a generation is like 20 years. So that's like 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, all the way up to 180 years ago, which is like 1840. That's me guessing, obviously. This machine reels the silk. Workers then hang the threads to dry. They might snap. Next, the threads head to the cooperative to be woven. Look how beautiful that is. And finally, the silk gets dunked a hundred times in all natural dyes. They use gak fruit for red, almond leaves or turmeric for yellow, tallow leaves for black, and indigo ferra for, well, indigo. It's the same technique they've used for generations. Silk weaving dates back 4,000 years in Vietnam, all the way to the Bronze Age. For millennia, it was the fabric of choice for nobility. And in its heyday in the 16th to 18th century, traders came from all over the world to buy Vietnam's silk. Beginning in the 2000s, Vietnam's temperatures heated up, and storms came more frequently. This con tàu này thì là nó không có ưa ưa nhiệt độ ẩm cao. There was also an influx of counterfeit silk from China. Mà Việt mình không thể biết được những người thực sự trong nghề hoặc là mình sử dụng bằng đốt. Okay, so obviously you can't just move to a different climate because Vietnam isn't that big to start with. And so the climate that might 
be better for silk could move out of the country into more Chinese areas. So that kind of gets rid of my thought of what could happen. À, Việt, mình không thể biết được những người thực sự trong nghề hoặc là mình sử dụng bằng đốt này. Đốt, đi đốt cháy lên thì mình mới biết được thôi. Real silk will burn slowly and smell like burnt hair, while the fake stuff will burn quickly and plastic. smell like plastic. Prices for Vietnam silk fluctuated, dropping as low as $3 per kilo. With less profit, young people took jobs in textile factories in the cities to earn more. Những cái mà làng nghề gần như mất đi và gần như ngày đấy là mọi người đã gần như là chán lắm rồi. Han heard the story of the diminishing craft village when she visited in the early 2010s, and she wanted to help. She quit her job in interior design and decided to band families together. Đó là chúng tôi, tôi với thành lập lại hợp tác xã là hợp nhau, cùng hợp thay vì chỉ là một người làm thôi rất là nhỏ bé. Chúng ta phải giữ lấy nghề bởi vì nghề này nó góp phần cho đất nước, cho quê hương, cho mỗi vùng miền. She got farmers to purchase air conditioning units so they could raise worms in any weather. Thế nên là mình phải lắp điều hòa, giữ cái độ nhiệt độ cho nó mát mẻ thôi. They went from being able to produce 440 to 600 pounds of cocoons per year to over 2200 pounds. Han introduced benefits for the farmers, like holidays off and helping stabilize the price for silk. Nó chỉ một giá thôi cho nên là mình yên tâm và được cái cái giá cả. Today, over 200 families in Nam Cao are part of her cooperative, pumping out 220 pounds of silk a month. And each family can make up to $12,000 a year, a high wage for this area. They weave a silk that is great at moisture and temperature control, making it breathable in the summer and insulating in the winter. Because of these properties, silk from Han's collective can be used in everything from sofa covers, curtains, and suits to pillowcases and sheets. Han hopes the success of the Nam Cao Cooperative will attract young talent back into the industry, so farmers can reinvest in the town. Sau này là tương lai sau này thì như hạnh nói là sẽ về làm đây cái cái khu để 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 ấy đấy chăn nuôi và làm nhà kính nhà gì đó hay là nhà 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 chăn nuôi tầm lại nhỉ? Until then, they'll keep spinning away. Yêu người bao nhiêu thì yêu người bấy nhiêu. Ôi giời. Dạ con cô thì đang làm cho ở dịp cuối năm cao hạnh rồi còn giờ cô mong cô còn mong là đến làm cho các cháu chắc như cô nữa. Tôi là vẫn cứ phát triển, càng mong phải phải càng phải phát triển hơn nữa chứ không phải là bỏ. That's really cool. Um, again, I love that. Uh, Business Insider, great channel. Oh, I want to... Uh, it was awesome. Interesting yeah. learning about uh, such a coveted product, especially back a few hundred years ago. Yeah. I, it, I I did make the comment of like you could move north. Obviously, that was like a just oh yeah, just move. But um, you know, being a smaller country, they they don't exactly have a lot of area to move to. But yeah, uh, the twelve thousand uh, for you know Vietnam that that seems like a good amount. Really cool video, awesome. Love learning. Hope you all are doing well. Join me next time. See you guys. Bye.